Hey pen peeps, it's Troy and I am back with another pen review today and I'm going to bring to you something that was a bit of a surprise to me. I like good surprises, I don't like bad surprises and this is one of those pens that if someone had come up to me and asked me, because it happens, actually it does happen, and other guys uh, I know have been asked just recently, uh, what is a very good inexpensive fountain pen that's affordable for me or maybe for a beginner and this is one of those pens that if I was to do a top 10 list of the best pens under $25 this would be one of them. And it was one of those I was pleasantly surprised. So, I am going to show you the Moon Man M2. Now, the listing I'm looking at right here on the eBay listing from which I purchased, Moon Man M2 Transparent Fountain Pen Updated Lakai, L-E-C-A-I Pen, Medium Nib, and the Gift A that comes along with it is a 1.1 millimeter stub nib. That's not what I originally ordered. Actually, there's a little bit of backstory to this. I had ordered the Moon Man when it uh, had uh, it was close to having just been released, and uh, when I was looking at listings, they were only well, gee, fine and extra fine nibs. Not a fan of either, but okay, let's get it. I've got some other Chinese pens that do okay with uh, the fine and extra fine nibs, so I went and ordered it. Six eight weeks later, it never showed up. So I message. Uh, the seller and one of the things about tracking when you buy from China direct you may get tracking but the tracking may only show the fact that it's been put into their mail system it doesn't give you step by step where the pen is and it will give you ultimately delivered status and that's it well I saw that on their listing uh, in the tracking info it said that the tracking number had been generated and a shipping label generated but the pen never made it into the system so I contacted them and I said hey you know what's the deal and they said oh yeah yeah it got returned to us in the mail no it didn't so they refunded my money and I went ahead and bought another one well by the time I went to go buy another one I saw a bunch of listings for the medium in the 1.1 stub nibs I was like woohoo good that's what I want uh, I would much rather have a medium uh, and I would much rather have a 1.1 stub as a spare rather than fine an extra fine we're on on board with that so I ordered it got it tried it out and I was pleasantly surprised my wife took the pen tried it she was surprised and she wanted one so baby got herself a moon man so this is what I've got right here now yeah, I got ink on my hands because I've been monkeying with a with a pen. Um, all right, it is what your classic looking. Um, you know, it's I'd say almost a cigar a cigar shape, but it's more like a rocket shaped uh, pen. But um, it is also a demonstrator, and I tend to like demonstrators. I don't know why I just do. I've got a lot of them uh, sitting here behind me in my little pen drawer. Uh, so. The Moon Man M2 comes just like you see it. It's like a clear plastic or acrylic sort of thing. And it is an eyedropper filler. And what that means to you is that you cannot use a converter or a cartridge on it. Now, when you get the pen, it comes to you in a clear case like this. You open it up and you know, you've got this plastic thing, which is what this pen sits inside of. You see, I've got uh, two of them. One's in purple, I filled with purple, and the other one's a dark, dark blue, which is mine. So it comes in this little thing, and it sits in this nice uh, little cutout here. And then you've got a little syringe, a little sucker, or little bulb syringe kind of thing. And what that is, is that's how you eyedropper fill it. You put that into the ink, you suck it up, and you put the pen, uh, you know, you, you, you take off the cap. So let's do that. And then you would unscrew the nib uh, section here. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to get ink. Ah, eh, then again, why not? Okay, you see how that twists? All right, now, you may see that I'm getting ink coming out of it down into the, the thing. Basically, you would twist this all the way off and you'd pull it off. i got some pictures I'm going to put online so you can see what it looks like without ink in it. Uh, but... And then it's got an O-ring on the inside here, so you don't necessarily have to put on any silicone grease or anything around the threads. It's got a good many threads, so it's going to hold, and it's going to hold a good amount of ink. So let's put that back on, and uh, you know that's my wife's filled with a nice purple. 
when I gave her all the choices of families of colors to use, she wanted purple. And I wanted to try a blue ink that I hadn't tried uh, pre prior to that. So anyway, um, let's talk about it a little bit. So, it's a very lightweight pen when you first get it. Now, I've got this filled with ink, so it's a lot heavier than it would have been if it didn't have any ink, because it holds a good amount. I mean, that's a, that's a slam full thing right there. Alright, so, this um, tapers down very nicely to the end, almost to a point, and it does almost the same thing here uh, for the cap. You unscrew it, it actually posts very nicely, very securely. It's very comfortable to fit in the hand. You can use it posted or unposted. And personally, I don't mind it posted. Why? Because it's not too heavy for me to be able to use in my hand. And that uh, cap does not back weight it significantly. Uh, and it's got a nice little bit of girth to it. So it's not a very thin pen. It's actually a nice holding pen. And it's got kind of a a bland nib to it and I'll show you some pictures of the nib here in just a little bit some some better resolution pictures than just what I'm showing here um, but um, it's a nothing special steel nib until you write with it I'm gonna tell you right now this nib is fantastic I was not expecting how smoothly this pen wrote this is a medium nib now one of the things that they do include for you I'm gonna put this back on in that little box is they throw in a nice little 1.1 stub. Well, I didn't feel like I could effectively comment on that until I went ahead and wrote with it. So, one of the things that I had done, I took an old Jinhao 250 that I had sitting in my pen collection that I had acquired some time ago um, for some charity auction and I had never used. It was just sitting in a drawer. I figured I'd keep it, give it away, use it to experiment if I wanted to. Had just never done anything with it. So, one of the things that I decided to do was to rip out the nib out of this and put that 1.1 stub in this. And I tried it. And, lo and behold, it writes awesome. Very smooth, very wide, very wet, very stubby. So the 1.1 stub nib that comes along with it, um, along with the medium nib combined, actually are a pretty good uh, added value, I think, to a very interesting looking pen. Now, aesthetically, I like it. I, like I told you, I like demonstrator pens. I like the idea that it's got this um, red band here where it just says Moon Man right on it. Okay, so you can tell just at quick glance it's a Moon Man when it's sitting in my drawer amongst all the other pens. I like the idea that they've got the clear section in here. The only thing that would have been cooler though is instead of having the black feed to it, if they had put in a clear feed, which I've seen done on some pens before, that would have been you know cooler than using black. But you know what? It it's functional, and that's what I like about pens. I don't care if they're really expensive. I don't care if they're inexpensive. I buy a pen to use them, and I want pens that write and write well. So, I've shown you what the pen looks like, I've told you about the comfort of it, and I'm going to throw up some statistics for you as far as you know, the length and the, uh, the girth and the weight of the pen so that you can have a, a few shots of it um, as to what you might think. And then I'm going to give you a writing sample of it here in a little bit, and I just may, might do a quick writing sample of the 1.1 stub. Okay, folks, we are back, and let's do the writing portion of our video, and uh, let us also do a size comparison. So, these are the two Moon Man uh, pens. This one here is my wife's pen, and I have that filled with a Papier Plume Violet. Yeah, she's been a little rougher with hers than I've been with mine. And I have mine filled with a Noodler's Van Gogh Starry Night, which is a very dark blue. So, one of the things about this pen that I don't particularly care for, um, which I do like in most pens, is that you have a roll stop. On my little Rhodia dot pad here, it's got an incline, so it's going to do that. So, let's do this. Let's put this down here. This is a Pilot Metropolitan, and since it's got a clip, there's a roll stop. 
and boop, put that right up next to it. So here's a Twisby Eco, just to give you a size comparison as well. And let's go ahead and throw in uh, a Wing Song 698, kind of sticking with the demonstrators here. And here is a Jin Hao 250. And the reason I'm bringing out the Jin Hao 250 for size comparison is I put the 1.1 stub that comes with the Moon Man in that particular pen. So maybe I'll show you how that writes as well. So let's go ahead and clear these out. And like I said, posted. Now, here is my, my Moon Man M2. This one has the medium nib. This medium nib is buttery smooth. Very little feedback. I mean, you can hear just a little bit, of it, but very little. So it is so smooth. No matter what direction, you can get a little bit of line variation uh, when you go downwards on the side. It has no problem doing side strokes, has no problem doing upward strokes. And so let's do a few little, little loop-de-loops here. I like doing those loop-de-loops because, you know, that's almost a part of my signature. So, um, but I will tell you, this particular pen, I was so happy with it when I first got it. And that was the Noodler's Starry Night. And it was a Van Gogh Starry Night. Sort of like, you know, the, um, the pen, the Van Gogh series uh, from Visconti. All right, so just for grins, just because I can. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm actually it's a stormy night or stormy afternoon, and I'm sitting here in my office, and I have thunder outside. So this is my wife's Moon Man. She also has the medium nib. Now I don't know if it's a difference in um, the the nibs, because they write very similar. They also both write very smoothly, but this one does write just a little bit differently, and it's probably it could very well be because it's different ink as well. Uh, whereas you know this particular ink um, is the Papier Plume Violet. Now one thing I use this pen to demonstrate for you as well when I unscrewed the the section, and you may have seen some of the ink start to ooze down. Now on a pen like this. You don't really want to do that. I only did that so I can show you guys. Uh, but one of the things that you have to do is reprime it once that happens, which meant I had to go shake ink down in into here. And uh, when I went to go, and I primed it before I did the video because, quite honestly, you would have already done that by the time you sit down to go write with this particular pen. Uh, so, uh, still, it's a it's a great writer for that. So, you know. This is a $15 pen, 16 at the max, including shipping. And if someone had said, you know, what's, uh, what's a great value for me at that price point, under $25, I would have definitely said this is a consideration uh, as long as you're willing to wait to get it shipped to you from China. So, just for grins, the 1.1 stub nib that came with mine, here we go. So here is uh, my Jin Hao 250 with the 1.1 stub nib that came with a that came with this particular pen that came with the moon man so this uh, this is a private reserve ink Um, and this one is, uh, is, it, is it like Placid Blue? So it's another very smooth. Um, one of the things about a stub, I'm not used to writing with stubs, so you got to be careful. You can't roll it. You can't. You don't have as much play with it as you do on a normal uh, nib, just because you don't have that ball on the end of it. That's not a like Placid Blue. <laughs> that is a Naples. 
blue now that I looked it up. I couldn't remember which one it was because I got three or four bottles of Private Reserve and, and a blue ink. Uh, so one of the things about using a stub is you got to be careful uh, and I'm not used to writing with stubs. I have very few stub nibs uh, at all because I'm not a big fan of them but this particular one I just wanted to play with because I knew I was going to be talking about the nib. But with a stub you don't have as much roll with it. You don't have as much um, I can't say control, but you don't have as mu much, you know, see, you got nothing there, you got nothing there. So when you're writing, I got to get used to having it more straight down, face down, and not move it as much. I tend to roll my pen just a little bit when I'm writing. Uh, that's just me and, and my habit of the way I do things. So anyway, the Moon Man M2. One of the nicer pens I've gotten uh, in a while in terms of usability and writability. Look, when I'm looking for a pen, I'm looking for how well does it write. When I pick it up, is it going to write well? I'm all about uh, the writing experience. I do collect particular pens. For instance, you know that if you watch my channel that I collect Waterman's. Uh, but this with just a plain old um, you know, iridium point steel nib, um, it does very, very well and is a great value for $15 to $16 shipped to your door. So, like I said, I'm about the writing experience, and this was a very nice, smooth, and happy writing experience, and I've been using mine a lot. Uh, so has my wife. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you're looking for a good idea for your collection, consider that. The Moon Man M2.